Welcome everyone. My name is Nico Santos and as the media relations coordinator for Dunhart Network of Arizona, my main role is to share stories about people who have been touched by organ, eye, and tissue donation. And there are many reasons that that's important to us at DNA. Here are two of them. Number one, keeping your loved one's legacy alive is important to us. And we know that people from all walks of life connect deeply on a human level through storytelling. And number two, we know because we've seen that by sharing your donation journey, you're allowing your loved one by extension to save and heal even more lives because your donation journey touches more souls than you'll even know. We're honored that you chose to share some of your time with us today to honor your loved one or your friend who chose to share the gift of life through generosity. And if you're anything like me today, you might need a tissue, but that's okay. And even though we're only together virtually, we want you to know that our hearts are with you in your grief as well as in the memories that make you smile about your loved one. So welcome, we hope you enjoy the program. Hi, I'm Marcel, the Director of Donor Family and Advocate Services for Donor Network of Arizona. As you may know, I've had the privilege of writing to you over the last year to express my deepest condolences for the passing of your loved one and at the same time to try to express our deepest gratitude for the fact that you chose life while you were experiencing the worst moment of your life that you were told that your loved one was not going to make it or that you were told that your loved one had already died I truly wish this event were different today. I don't like being in front of a camera. I don't like that this is television stuff today. That's not what I do. That's not what Donor Network does. We're not camera people. But this is the best we can do today. We're in the midst of coronavirus and that has changed everything for us and for you. In a normal day, we would be welcoming you in person. We would be listening to you. We would be looking into your eyes. We would hear your stories of your loved one. We would really be able to connect. And today, the closest we can get is for me to kind of move up to the camera and try to really connect with you about what we wish to express. We can never tell you enough times how thankful, how deeply grateful we are for the generosity that you displayed. When I speak of generosity, I know most of us want to be good and generous and kind and compassionate people. But that's on a good day. That's when everything is going well in our lives. The time that we met you, the time that we met your loved one, it was the worst day of your life. Everything had gone wrong. You received the worst possible news. You were in a deep, dark tunnel. And somehow in that moment, you chose life. You chose to be generous. You chose to be kind and loving. Who does that? You did that. That is inspirational to everyone who hears the story of your family, but especially of your loved one. Who was your loved one that inspired this kind of extreme giving? That's what this event is about. It is our humble attempt to try to express the gratitude of certainly Donor Network of Arizona, but the entire Arizona community you have stood out amongst the community as people of great generosity and great love. In this work, I get to hear many stories, stories of donations, stories that really touch my heart. One of the most amazing stories that I heard was from a family just like yours. They had just received the terrible news that the husband, the father of this family, had died. He had been declared brain dead. And we had the conversation with the family about his possibly sharing life with others. 
and the family was discussing amongst themselves, should they do this? They were in a terrible place. They were hurting so much. And how could they possibly rise to the occasion to share life with others? And they were having this discussion, the adults amongst themselves. Should they do this? Should they not do this? Was this too much? They didn't know what to do. And unbeknownst to them, the 12-year-old daughter of this patient was listening in the background. And she heard the adults discussing this and wondering what they should do. And this little 12-year-old girl, Isabel, walked to the family and she says to them, it wouldn't be so bad if he donates his organs. Maybe he saves someone else's dad. That mother of Isabel later told us that it, it was an epiphany. It really, in her mind, something happened that that little girl lit a light for her in her mind. And with that, this family chose to be generous, kind, and loving. And that decision to give life not only transformed the lives for recipients, but transformed the lives for that family themselves. As they got to see their last gesture in honor of their husband, their father, their loved one, to be one of loving generosity. That is what we hope donation has meant for you, that it has been transformative. Not only the lives of recipients have been transformed, but that your lives have been transformed and have experienced a healing, epiphany. That's what we discover all the time in this work, that there are bits of light that shine. In fact, that epiphany, that kind of light is the inspiration for the theme of our event today. It is illuminating, illuminating generosity, because that light, the camera's on me, but the camera really should be on you and your story and your loved one. A little later on, we're gonna show you a very important part of Donor Network of Arizona's building. If you were to come to Donor Network, the very first thing that you would see as you entered the building would be this wall of words. These words were inspired by you, donor families, by your loved ones, by your stories. These are not words that we made up in a boardroom meeting one day, but these were words that we learned from listening to your stories, from learning from you. I'm going to show you all those words later, but the word I really want to highlight that's in the center of that wall is the word love. That's a word that doesn't get thrown around a lot in the work of donation, but I think it's key and it's central. The reason we make most of our decisions in life that really matter are from love. And when I really listen to families tell their loving stories of their loved one who passed, they're stories of love. They're stories that are memorable because they focus in on what matters. And ultimately, when people make the decision to share life with others, when they choose life, they do it because they're being loving to their loved one's memory. They choose it because they're being loving to others, to complete strangers. They do it because they are loving people. They do it out of love. When we have discussions with donor families, when we can get to that depth, that's the point we really learn the most about those families. I thank you for allowing us to be with you today in your homes. And I wish it wasn't a camera. I wish it wasn't like this. I wish it weren't a virtual event, but it is. But this is all about trying to connect with you today and really humbly express our deepest gratitude and our deepest love for the choices for you. You mean so much to us. This work is not possible without the amazing generosity of families. So I welcome you to our virtual event and hope you will experience this as an event of healing, an event of love. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce to you a dear friend of mine and a colleague Marta Godoy, who will 
be able to speak to you in the beauty of another language. Un saludo muy especial y sentido para todos ustedes. En nombre de la red de donante, quiero contarles que estamos sintiendo mucho dolor por su pérdida. También sentimos gratitud por su generosidad y también sentimos admiración por el valor que tuvieron al ofrecer este regalo de vida a otras personas que estaban en necesidad. El COVID o el coronavirus ha cambiado mucho nuestras posibilidades de estar en contacto. Hoy quisiéramos estar con ustedes, darles un abrazo, mirarles a los ojos y sentir con ustedes ese amor que ustedes experimentan por sus seres amados. Nos gustaría estar con ustedes y a, a, abrazarles y escuchar las historias de amor, de las historias graciosas, las historias que recuerdan a sus seres amados y que hacen que ese recuerdo siempre esté vivo en su corazón. Al mismo tiempo, queremos agradecer que ustedes estén hoy juntos, imagino que están juntos en casa, celebrando la vida de su ser amado, así como lo estamos haciendo nosotros aquí. Y aunque estemos en esta situación virtual, nosotros sentimos su amor, su dolor, su pasión y queremos recordar con ustedes. Queremos, para recordar, leerles un bello poema de un poeta del siglo XII que se llama Halevi. Me voy a permitir leerlo. Amar lo que la muerte puede tocar es una cosa temible. Una cosa temible. Amar, esperar, soñar, ser y o oh, perder. Y una cosa para los tontos es esto. Y una cosa santa. Porque es una cosa santa amar. Porque tu vida ha vivido en mí. Tu risa una vez me elevó. Tu palabra fue un regalo para mí. Recordar esto trae gozo doloroso. Es una cosa humana el amor. Una cosa santa amar lo que la muerte ha tocado. Y con esto les queremos decir que gracias por haber convertido en un momento tan doloroso la muerte en un regalo de esperanza y de amor para otros que lo necesitaban. En esta velada nosotros que la llamamos una velada para iluminar la generosidad, para iluminar el amor para iluminar el valor que ustedes tuvieron, la bondad. Venimos hoy para hacer brillar todos estos valores, para que ustedes brillen y para, sobre todo, para que sus seres amados brillen en este momento. Ahora quiero presentarles a Laura Ramos, ella es la administradora del Departamento de Apoyo a las Familias Donantes, aquí en la Red de Donantes de Arizona. Now, Laura Ramos, manager of donor family and advocate services, will share a special story that many of us gathered today can relate to. Thank you, Marta. Today, I have the honor of introducing an incredible family, the Wilmot family. Jennifer and Ken Wilmot had an amazing and compassionate son. Sammy, who unfortunately earlier this year in April passed away at the very young age of 16. Just months prior to Sammy's passing, while getting his driver's license at the MVD, he made the very generous decision to save and heal lives by registering to be an organ and tissue donor. Now Sammy's bright light continues to shine on in the lives of the four people he saved through organ donation. Sammy touched many more and help to heal many more through tissue donation. It is no wonder that Sammy's parents, Jennifer and Ken, and his two older sisters, Sienna and Savannah, 
were so proud of him. Sammy was very loving and compassionate, and he spent his whole life helping others. Now, even in death, Sammy continues to illuminate his light, not only on the lives of his family, but on the lives of those that he touched with his gift of life. He had a certain set of rules, kind of like a moral code that made sense to him. Sadaka. Sadaka, yeah. yeah Very right. charitable. He was a very kind and uh, a very kind giving soul. A very kind soul. He was always about, I think, the underdog. You know, he always cared about people who didn't have as much as he did. His favorite place was Tut Hill uh, Park. That's uh, just a couple miles away. And they have a, a couple of jump tracks. He uh, gave his bike to another kid to ride and talked to me and another a friend of mine said, hey, let's let them ride our bikes. Is that okay? So, you know, he spent the day helping those kids learn how to ride the bikes and go over the pump track and the small jumps. When I got down to Tut Hill that day, he was, he was in the middle of helping another little kid um, put his helmet on. He patted him on the head and said, okay, buddy, let's go. I remember one of the kids fell off and um, Sammy stopped what he was doing and dropped his bike and went over to the little kid to help him up. And so he would go help this little boy up out, off, the, off the ground and, you know, call him little nicknames like Buddy and, all right, man, let's go. I think he felt that everybody has a duty to take care of other yeah. people. He was, uh, you know, he had a really strong feeling of justice. When Sammy got his license and he said he wanted to be a donor. I really, I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to discuss it because I didn't want to ever think about that possibility. And I, um, but at least that it provides, um, you know, hope for four other families that he was able to save. Uh, I think we get out of bed for each other and for our girls. We're in the process of getting ready to write letters to the recipient family. Sitting down for that is very difficult to do. So like we haven't been able to do it yet. And I think ultimately it would feel really good to uh, meet them. Um, but I also think it's gonna be very hard. I know it sounds weird, but the man who got Sammy's part, I would really like to put my ear up to his chest <laughs> yeah. so I could hear his heart. That would make me... Oh, really if somebody was suffering or hurting or needed something, you have an obligation to help them. And just to tell, uh, you know, the other donor families that people had told us about grieving is you just, you have to you give yourself time. You grieve because you love. The fact that we have all this pain right now is only because we loved him so much and love him. And yeah. so... I know that Sammy is, um, his energy is around somewhere, and I know that he is um, happy that um, he was able to save four other people. So just knowing that, um, knowing that that's what he would have wanted, I mean, that's, of course, I mean, that's of course what we would do. A positive uh, thing for us to take the sting off losing him. But we know it's the seed that's planted out there. We know it's probably the biggest thing that can honor his life. What an incredible young man. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Ken, for sharing Sammy's story with us. We truly appreciate you being a part of our ceremony today. And now to continue on with our ceremony, I'd like to welcome back Nico.
Donor Network of Arizona is the state's federally designated organ procurement organization, and we also serve as a tissue and eye bank. As a nonprofit, the support from our community allows us to have events like this today to honor our donor heroes, as well as to be out in public to educate our fellow Arizonans about the gift of life. These services wouldn't be possible without support from the community. Such support comes from our sponsors, Dignity Health, CryoLife, St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center, and our presenting sponsor, Mayo Clinic, has a message for us today. Welcome to this meaningful celebration of life, sponsored by Donor Network Arizona, a caring digital space where families share stories and celebrate those who selflessly gave life to others. I'm Dr. David Chaska, a consulting liver physician here at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. As one of the largest transplant centers in the country, Mayo Clinic is proud to support organ and tissue donation. We greatly value our collaboration with Donor Network of Arizona. This work allows us at Mayo to provide the gift of life to more than 600 patients per year, including a record this September where 85 solid organ transplants occurred. This event is to honor and celebrate the donors and their generous families who have given the ultimate compassionate gift. A single donor can save or improve the lives of up to eight additional patients. This celebration of life is a powerful event where donor families come together to remember their loved ones whose legacies live on. Families share and celebrate with each other during this digital event. Thank you, Mayo, for your support and for your message for us today. In the meantime, we're going to look at the other side of donation what it means for the Siqueiros family of five who has really been through the ringer. Some of us at DNA have had the honor to meet them as they go through their donation journey with a smile on miraculously. Two-year-old fraternal twins Jason and Jackson, as well as their older sister, four-year-old Isabel, were all born and diagnosed with cardiomyopathy at a very young age. Isabel, two years ago, got her second chance of life through a heart transplant. Jason Jr. also received his gift of life earlier this year as we were following the family through a journey. A call came through an answer to their prayer, which they now call Jackson's Special Heart. They kept my family together. Without one of them, we'd be in a completely different story here. Three hours before his transplant, he coded again. So it was like just in time. And they said, you know, if we wouldn't have brought her in two nights prior, she would have just gone in her sleep. Not one, not two, but three hearts. And I'm just forever grateful, eternally in debt to these families. And I pray we get to meet at least one someday. He was the healthiest coming in, so he is just rocking this recovery. He's walking, he's running, he's riding in his car. The first thing that goes through my head is the, the, their child was just taken from them and how wonderful of people they have to be that during this awful time, they decide I'm gonna save eight kids' lives. And it just, they're just the first people in my thoughts. I just, I don't understand how my family got so lucky. There's not even words I can ever come up with to describe how grateful we are to these families who choose to donate life. They're just forever a part of my heart and my children's heart. We just pray every day that these hearts last us a very, very long time, if not forever. Going forward, we will continue to appreciate our lives. We wake up every day so grateful. My children know they have special hearts. Even at age two, we've embedded in them. Their heart came from another child and I just want them growing up grateful and always remembering that they are alive because of a donor.
number one, thank you. And um, number two, yes, we live our lives for double now. My kids know that their heart beats for two, that their child will always live on through my children. They saved my whole family and me. My kids are their kids too, and they wouldn't be here without them. such a beautiful family and a beautiful story and we're also thankful for the generosity of those donors. Sarah says they also learned that all three children have the same genetic deletion that led to their restrictive cardiomyopathy in the first place. Their miraculous story has led to local news coverage as well as a feature in People magazine, all thanks again to the generosity of those donors. Ahora vamos con Marta de nuevo con un mensaje especial en español. Gracias Nico. Ahora vamos a honrar a los héroes que compartieron el regalo de vida en 2019. Vamos a nombrarlos por orden alfabético de acuerdo con su apellido. The shortest distance between two hearts is a story. We've had the chance to hear the stories of the Wilmot family and the Siqueiros family. Those are beautiful stories and they have helped open our minds to what donation is all about. The centerpiece of our day, however, is you. It's your loved ones. We will now have the opportunity to see the names of your loved ones. Over 150 donor families offered to share the names of their loved one for this tribute. It's a tribute that's done in light. It is done in a breeze. It is done to really capture the loving hearts that we met when we had the chance to be with you. We hope this tribute of donors from the year 2019 will remind you not simply of the sadness of that moment, but also of the great love that you had in honor in memory of your loved one. Let's all take a moment together to reflect on the beauty of these lives before us.
I love seeing all those names because they do represent compassion, generosity, and love. I know for all of you to see your loved one's names must have touched you deeply, must have hurt you in some way because you wish your loved one were with you. But we do hope this tribute was a way to lift up your hearts today. We hope it's an invitation for you to continue to talk about your loved ones. The most important thing we do at Donor Network is we tell stories. We tell loving stories of kindness and generosity. I would invite you to think about sharing the story of your loved one with Donor Network. We love being able to share those stories in the larger community. I want to ask Nico to step back in to share with you how you might be able to do that. Thanks, Marcel. We can talk facts and figures all day, but until someone actually feels a story in their heart, they're unlikely to take action. Personal stories from real people who look and sound like you are more likely to connect to you in a meaningful level and might help someone else see a different side of the story. So how can you get involved? And if this is something you're interested in, let's take a look. LiveOnAZ.org is a great place to get started. Add your name to the wall of life and more importantly, share your story. You can honor the memory of your loved one or your donor and allow others to do the same. Once a story page is created, it can be shared with others who can then comment or even register as a donor in honor of that person. If you want to become even more of an advocate, consider joining our volunteer program, which focuses on educating the public about donation and the importance of registering. Just go to donatelifeaz.org slash get involved to fill out an application and get started. Applying and onboarding can all be done virtually from the comfort of your home. We often need speakers for events or media requests, and these are two main places that we go in search of those stories. The impact of donation on your life and your family can be increased hundreds of thousands of times just by sharing it with others. And we hope you consider doing us the honor of shepherding that story. We want you to really to think about every person you pass and the story that you share with them. Think of it as light and how we can really light up the world with generosity through donation. With us now is our Vice President of Development and Referral Services, Sarah Pace Jones. Thank you, Nico. It's an honor and privilege to be speaking with you here today. Now we turn to the part of our program where we honor your loved one with a candle lighting memorial. This portion of our program was inspired by a quote. There are some who bring a light so great to the world that even after they have gone, that light remains. That is how we remember your loved ones. As we light a candle of remembrance here at the DNA offices, we invite you to light a candle in your home as well. As you do, I will read the words adapted by Jennifer Wirth, a beautiful tribute to your loved ones. Gathered together, we find our light. And each spark shifts and multiplied, scattering its radiance on our ordinary lives. Like everything else precious, more valuable when shared. Light, made of the stuff of stars. Let that light shine. Watch for it falling on each other's faces. Count the beams, then catch them. Let them be reflected back, see their promise. In the light, listen to those you have cherished. Hold them in your arms, let them hear your heart. Tell your truth, tell your story, tell your love. Gathered together, we find our light as we illuminate generosity.
Thank you for joining us for this candle lighting remembrance ceremony. We hope you had the opportunity to light a candle in memory of your loved one at home. Now I am pleased to introduce you to Tim Brown, Donor Network of Arizona's president and CEO. Thank you, Sarah. Watching that tribute was beautiful, but probably also difficult for you. Over the years, I know donor families have come up to me when we've done these events and just, just talk to me about how proud they are of their loved one. But the reality is, you never thought you were gonna get invited to an event like this. Your loved one should be here with you right now. They should be holding your hand, lighting up the room with their smile, and just being who they were, the most generous person that you knew. So every day we witness your generosity. Actually, in 2019, we had more organ, eye, and tissue donors than we did the previous year, and it's all because of your decision and your loved ones. We know the holiday season is coming up, and there's probably gonna be an empty chair for some of you. And we hope that chair does not cause sadness but brings you joy and gratitude of the legacy that continues with your loved one. So on behalf of my board of directors, my team and myself, I wanna say thank you for your generosity and your loved one providing a legacy. Thank you. Ustedes han traído hoy con ustedes en su corazón a sus seres amados. Ahora que nos despedimos, esperamos que se lleven con ustedes luz y esperanza en su corazón y nuestra gratitud eterna. When I return home each day or each night after being out, I have a sign in my home just before I enter. It says, return with honor. That sign is a reminder of how I should have lived my day. At Donor Network, we have a similar touchstone that I refer to we have our wall of words. It's a touchstone so that every employee of Donor Network who enters the building each day is reminded at what is at the heart of our work. I promised I'd show you that wall and I'd like to do that now. To touch these words, to see this wall, is to be reminded of who we are at Donor Network but more importantly, it's to be reminded who you are. These are your words. These words belong to your loved ones. These are the words that have inspired us in our work. These are the words that have allowed so many lives to be saved and healed. Again, I wish I were with you today to embrace you, to hug you, all of Donor Network staff. In fact, all of the Arizona community wishes we could be with you. The one word that I want to leave you with today is that word of love. We see this as a work of love because you have invited us to see it in that way. I hope this event has been helpful to you in some way. We thank you for sharing time with us and allowing us into your home. Before we go, another thank you to our sponsors, Dignity Health, CryoLife, St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center, and our presenting sponsor, Mayo Clinic. We certainly hope this event was special for you. We also invite you to share the link with family members and friends who perhaps weren't able to make it to the live stream today. The video will be available for playback shortly after we end here. And while the lights will go off soon on this gathering, we know the light from your donor, our donor heroes, will continue to shine even in our darkest moments. If you'd like more information about organ, eye, and tissue donation, please visit donatelifeaz.org. You can also use that link to encourage other people to register today. It only takes 38 seconds. And stay in contact with us through our social media channels. Search Donate Life AZ on Facebook, Instagram, as well as here on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you have an evening filled with light and love. Thank you.